In wokeism continues to be poison news, a lawsuit is suing California to stop forcing professors to teach the wokeism in the form of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So California would like to put in the minds of its people attending its colleges, and some of its professors object to this. They're like, I don't want to teach this absolute garbage. And California's like, you have to. So the professors are fighting back in a lawsuit. So let's learn a little bit more about this lawsuit as it relates to the issues of the college environment. Let's get started with this. The Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression has filed a lawsuit on behalf of six California community college professors to seek to halt new system-wide regulations that would force the professors to espouse and teach politicized concepts of diversity, equity, and inclusion, otherwise known as the wokeness. And at least six professors are like, nah, fam, I'm not about that life because the wokeness is really, really dumb. Each professor teaches at one of the Fresno area community colleges within the state center community college district. Under the regulations that have been forwarded by the state, 54,000 professors who teach in the community college system must incorporate the anti-racist viewpoints into college teaching, no matter what they think about it all. And also it's like trying to force them to provide an education about things that they don't themselves don't actually believe in. So this gets into some tension area as it relates into the nature of it being a state school versus professors. So when it comes to, get, to give you sort of the highlights on this, because we have to talk about this in a very high level way before we get started on this, right? The, 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 the legal map on this is a little bit weird when it comes to education. And also there's a pretty strong difference as it relates to K through 12 versus college. All right. So if you are, a, let's start with basic principle number one, the state has freedom of speech unto itself. So the free, so the state gets to spend, gets to send what messages it wants to say. So these are state schools. So the first idea is that these are state employees engaged in their state work and they have to espouse the state's preferred position, not because it's what they think, but because they're employees and they have to do what their employer wants, right? All right. So when it comes to that, for a lot of things, that's okay. But when it comes to education in particular, you run into some countervailing considerations. Now, if it's K through 12 school, the colleges, the the, uh, the, the state has a lot more power when it comes to the K through 12, because the idea is, well, twofold. First of all, the nature of the academic teaching is by its nature less sophisticated, it's less high level. And also the people that are being taught are children. So there's a more of an idea of like the idea of in parent, 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 you know, the idea of standing in the stead of the parents and all the rest of it. So if you're trying to command the K through 12 teachers about what they can teach, you're on more shallow footing. If you're trying to teach college professors, there's much more of a history of independence with that. So that's where this sort of is going to break down. So the fact that it's a college versus K through 12 is going to make a substantial difference. The regulations explicitly require professors to pledge allegiance to consented ideology viewpoints. Professors must acknowledge cultural and social identifiers that are diverse, fluid, and intersectional. and must develop knowledge of intersectional, of social identity, and multiple axes of oppression that people face from different racial, ethnic, and minority groups face. Wow. Everyone's oppressed in different degrees, and I hope you know all the axes. That should be in, that should be fun. Faculty performance and tenure is also evaluated based on the commitment to and promotion of these viewpoints, which respects how their you know the ability to keep their jobs. So there's all kinds of issues there. A Reedy College of Professor of Chemistry says, "I'm a professor of chemistry. How am I supposed to incorporate this into my classroom instruction? What is the anti-racist perspective of the atomic mass of boron?" That's a good question. These regulations are totalitarian triple whammy, said the attorney who filed the lawsuit. The government is forcing professors to teach and preach a politicized version of viewpoints they do not share, imposing incomprehensible guidelines and threatening to punish professors when they cross arbitrary, indiscernible lines. The requirements themselves are controversial within academia. The research indicates that half the professors believe these mandatory diversity statements violate academic freedom when it comes through, you know, post a through 12 education, academic freedom is something certainly much more of a historical tradition. The sole mention of academic freedom in California's framework phrases it as an inconvenience, warning professors not to weaponize academic freedom to inflict cultural trauma on students. So, yeah. Hearing uncomfortable ideas is not a curricular trauma. 
and teaching all sides of an issue is not weaponizing academic freedom, said a professor of English and plaintiff in the lawsuit. That's just called education. An official glossary of terms released by the states makes it plain that anti-racist views it mandates are highly ideological. Indeed, the definition for anti-racism states that a person that says they're not a racist are in denial. So you all are racist, no matter what you think. California declares colorblindness or the belief that the best way to end prejudice and discrimination by treating individuals as equally as possible without regard to race, cultural, and ethnicity is itself a problem because it perpetuates existing racial inequalities and denies systematic racism. So by saying that racism is bad, you are perpetuating racism. That's nice. Even a professor saying something as benign as, I grade my class based on merit, is suspect under the regulations. Merit is embedded in the ideology of whiteness and upholds race-based structural inequality. Merit protects right privilege under the guise of standards as highlighted by anti-affirmative action forces. Fire first expressed concerns within California when the regulations were proposed in 2022, warning in the public comment period that the new rules would be unconstitutional by requiring fa faculty to profess allegiance to and promote a consistent set of ideological views. The response from the chancellor's office was woefully inadequate, denying the chancellor or the board of governors could ever violate a professor's academic freedom. The regulations are now in effect in the state center and fire clients have already been forced to change their syllabi. California's lawsuit comes almost a year after fire also filed a lawsuit against Florida's Stop Woke Act as it applies to Colorado cl college classrooms. In that case, the fire legislature, like California community colleges, sought to dictate views the public university professors can express while teaching. And federal court had granted fire's motion for preliminary injunction to block enforcement of the Stop Woke Act, calling it dy dy dystopian. So at least they are playing both sides of the fence. Fire is representing the professors at the various schools. The defendant, of course, is the California Community Colleges and their various apparatuses. The Foundation for Fire is a nonprofit organization defending these rights. Thus, that brings us to the end of the story for the moment about this lawsuit seeking to stop the diversity education in California among the college professors that are teaching in that system, saying that they don't want to espouse something that they don't believe in. So, We'll see how it's going, and that, for the moment, brings us to the end of discussion of this story.